Hi, and welcome to Webinar Wednesdays with Jeffka.org. We have with us Seher Mansoor of Bare Necessities. Uh, thank you for joining us today, four o'clock on a Wednesday. Uh, we have Chiku, who's chat manager. He'll be taking questions in chat. My name is Jacob. I'm the director of engagement at Jatka.org and your host for today. Thank you for being here. Um, if you can hear me, can you please put a ping in the chat? We requesting everyone to, to be on mute, but if you can hear us, please give us a ping in chat. Thank you, thank you. Everyone, Gunjan, Rebecca, Jasmine, thank you very much. Uh, if you can see our visuals, can you give us a ping in chat? Can you see Seher and myself? Can you please? Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Great. Um, so let's just get started because uh, we have people here already and we are live on Facebook. So if this room fills up, you can direct people to Facebook and uh, the video will be stored up there. We do this every second Wednesday where we try to give content that helps build an equitable, inclusive and sustainable India. Last week was, the, two weeks ago was composting with uh, Wasuki Ayangar. And this week we have Sarah Mansur, uh, our guest who's gonna be talking trash. Let's talk trash. So with that, uh, could we have any questions that we can ask up front? Or uh, do you have any questions with people on? Before we start, anyone would like yes. to ask questions? Yeah. We yeah. Take, while we wait for people to join, get the conversation rolling. For the next two minutes, you're welcome to put on your mic and ask a question. Uh, hi, so is this the session basically for what we can do in our personal lives? to reduce, I mean, be more sustainable. Is that what it is? Sahar, can you give us a preview of what to expect? Yes, definitely. So I'm going to actually just share a little bit about my experience. And then we're going to dive into what we can do. So tips and tricks. And then also everyone can kind of share what they're incorporating into their lifestyle to live more sustainably. And hopefully we can all learn from each other. OK, that sounds good. Thank you. Good question, Sia. Okay, so I think we can get started. Chiku, we have the first slide. This is Webinar Wednesdays. We do this every alternate Wednesdays from four to five. We have special guests every two weeks uh, where we try to give out useful information to help build an equitable, inclusive, and sustainable India. This is jatka.org, Webinar Wednesdays. Uh, we're gonna show you some photographs of what the works with, work with that we do and our team. Next, please. This is our team uh, from last year, the photograph. Uh, we have a lot of new team members. We have about 20 members strong. We work primarily in air pollution and gender and sexuality. Uh, our work includes campaigning online as well as on ground. Here are some pictures of our events from tree planting drives, cleanups, air pollution campaigns. Of course, all of this was before the pandemic and now we do a lot more online. Uh, next, so with not uh, much more time wasted, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Seher Mansoor, the founder of Bear Necessity Zero Waste Solutions. Based out of Bangalore, a really cool startup, and this is her quite popular talk, Let's Talk Trash. Uh, yeah, over to you, Sarah. I'm going to mute myself. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me, Chatka team. I just love and respect everything that you all do. Uh, Jacob and I have had the pleasure to actually do this talk together at Omade Cafe before the pandemic, uh, many months ago, maybe a year or so ago. Uh, so it's really fun to kind of be doing this again and doing this online to be accessible to more people. Um, honestly, the session is meant to be super interactive. So please pop your questions throughout in the chat box and that it be super thriving, a really good discussion. Um, and uh, we're gonna have a couple, several stop points where we're gonna kind of share, but you know, feel free to kind of have your questions all the time in the chat box. Um, yeah, so I guess my first question for all of you is what is the last piece of trash you all threw out? And you can all put this on uh, the chat box. 
what was the last piece of trash that you threw out? Was it chewing gum, um, food wrap? I don't know. Go for it. Get those questions rolling. For the sake of people who can't see the chat on Facebook, we have curd, fruit peels, biscuits. Uh, we have takeaway packaging. Uh, we have milk covers, grocery plastics, biscuit packets, yeah, a whole range of Banana peels, fruit peels, amazing. Okay, cool. So today we're gonna to talk about ways in which we can reduce a lot of uh, our trash on our daily basis. And I'm gonna share a little bit about my journey, how I got started and hopefully incorporate a few tips and tricks that you can incorporate into your lifestyle. So we can move to the next slide. So today let's talk trash. Um, we can move to the next slide. <laughs> All right, welcome to my zero waste journey. And I know this sounds pretty crazy, but this is primarily all of the waste that I've produced in the past four years. And I know that sounds really crazy, but today we're gonna help dive in deeper into what that means and what that looks like. So growing up, actually I had, um, I have two older sisters. Uh, I have a dad who absolutely loves nature. All my weekends meant kind of growing up in Cabin Park, climbing trees, falling off of trees. Um, and, you know, family holidays meant jumping into waterfalls, uh, coffee picking and whatnot. So we just had this huge element of nature in our lives. So I think I've been an environmentalist since I was like three or four, but I only started actively calling myself an environmentalist um, when I moved to college. Can we press the next? So just yeah. give me one minute. Uh, there's some error in my laptop here. No. Because we have moved, uh, I've, I've taken over share screen, don't worry. This guy's on. Go ahead, please go ahead. Awesome, so we can actually just go to the next slide and then the next slide. Um, and then the next slide. Amazing. So I think I um, started to really identify myself as an environmentalist when I was 18 or 19, when I moved to college. Um, and I watched this short documentary of this lady named Bea Johnson and how she was living on a daily basis. And I remember being completely inspired, but also thinking I could never do this. I'm a college student. I have three jobs on campus. On campus. Uh, she probably has a lot of time. So I just came up with this laundry list of excuses why I could never lead a zero waste lifestyle. But I remember being really, really inspired. And I walked into my Dean's office and I asked my Dean, I said, you know, Dean Saliza, you don't have the major I want. And he said, no. Sarah, you sound like you're crazy because we have like 500 odd majors here. Um, but basically I really want to take environmental science in the science department and environmental policy in the policy department. Um, and I had the pleasure of kind of merging all of those courses into one kind of major and study environmental planning um, at this very amazing hippie little art school. Um, so fast forward a few years, I thought I was on this academic journey. I thought I wanted to be a professor and kind of get my PhD and all of that stuff. Uh, but honestly, one of the best things that happened to me was that I got rejected from the PhD program at Cambridge. Um, so what I did was then I spent some time at WHO, at the World Health Organization, during the Ebola outbreak. So actually, it was um, really kind of a weird parallel to what we're currently reading. Um, but essentially, I was really, really inspired to see that how quickly nations were acting on healthcare and how at that time it was just a mid Paris agreement. And there was a lot of developed countries versus developing countries rhetoric in the climate negotiations and things like that. And lots of like blame, blame, blame game. And I think that things weren't moving as quickly as we wanted to. So it was really nice to see in a contrast how countries were really coming together to act really quickly on health. Um, so, Moving back home to Bangalore in 2015, I started to work at Selco Foundation, which is um, a solar energy organization that works primarily with underserved communities. So we work primarily in rural parts of Karnataka, but also various underserved communities in the fringes of the city. Um, so what we did was solarize public health centers, hospitals, um, agri equipment for farmers. And it was just really fun. It was you know, a bunch of kurtas, overnight backpack and on really any um, overnight bus ride around Karnataka. Um, and I had the pleasure of kind of visiting some of the most gorgeous places in Karnataka and India uh, than I'd ever been before. Um, everyone in my office knew I was obsessed with waste. 
So I got assigned working on this project with a waste picker or a waste warrior community near our Bangalore airport in Hebal. And um, it was really interesting to see this smart city, fancy Bangalore International Airport being built. And really not far away from that was this community that um, was so different in so many ways. And the disparity was just something that was so, so glaring. Um, so this community, like many communities that we all can see, are largely migratory. So they don't have citizenship rights or um, you know, access to lighting or other cards or bank accounts. Um, and basically what we did was try to get them energy access through an intervention. So what we did was just put solar panels on the tea shop in the morning. So when they all come in for their chai, they also kind of put in their battery to charge, go on for a day's work, come back, and then they have this fully charged solar battery um, that they plug into their solar lantern. And uh, of course, I got pretty close to this community while working with them. Um, but I also basically would follow them on my cycle between 5 and 9 a.m. before work. And um, of course, I could kind of notice the conditions in which they were segregating all of our waste. So for instance, this ma man in the orange t-shirt, his name is Rahman. Um, I know how many daughters he has, I know their names. And um, I think I was really kind of shocked looking at the conditions in which he was collecting waste very, very closely, whether that's broken glass, sanitary napkins, you know, segregating all of this with his complete bare naked hand. And that's something that really kind of resonated with me. Um, and that's when I thought back to that crazy video of Bea Johnson that I watched my second year of college. And I thought I'm gonna try and lead a zero waste lifestyle. So it was for very, very personal reasons. I never had an, you know, desire to create a business or an enterprise around it. Um, but I was kind of trying to incorporate few tips and tricks um, to just kind of start leading a more mindful lifestyle because I just wanted to walk and talk my values and um, I wanted it just to be more congruent with everything I've always said I care about. Um, so the next slide, please. Of course, we all know um, kind of what a mess we're currently living in. We're currently living in the largest global garbage crisis of our lifetime. And in the pandemic, you know, it said that countries that would produce X amount of waste per year kind of reach that quota within the first three months of the pandemic. So you can just real, you know, you can just kind of put that into perspective. Um, we're basically producing 5x more waste each country uh, on an average amidst this pandemic. Um, so this problem is only growing. And if you all are already here, I think you all already know about this. I'm not going to uh, get too much into the details so we can move into the next slide, but I'm sure you all obviously have been confronted by the waste and plastic problem and know how bad it is. So what is zero waste? Um, and I know it sounds like a pretty crazy concept, but the idea really is to reduce our waste to as little as possible. Um, and while zero waste is very, very um, an ambitious goal, I think the idea is just to kind of shoot for the moon and maybe you'll hit the stars and that's totally fine, right? Um, and essentially it is a philosophy that guides people's lifestyles to reduce their waste to as little as possible. But I think also the core of it, it's a lifestyle that really is very, very supportive of community health and justice. Um, because I think when you also think about our waste problem, uh, me, for instance, I have always thought about it from an environmental perspective and I was this environmental nerd. Um, you know, being at WHO, it made me think about it from a health lens, which I honestly hadn't thought about earlier. And then moving back home to Bangalore for me really made me understand our waste problem from a social justice lens because um, who is often collecting the waste? Um, it's, you know, and where are incinerators or landfills usually located? It's uh, usually in low-income neighborhoods, um, whether it's a poor Latino, African-American community abroad, or right here in Bangalore or in India. It, you know, it is usually in uh, communities that don't have that much social or economic power. So it's something that I really started to think about. Um, so yeah, what's zero waste? Just reducing your waste as little as possible. Next slide, please. Okay, so how did I get started? These are my first few uh, tips and tricks or ways I got started. But Jacob, you want to kind of jump in here? Yeah, I want to jump in and actually just see if we can ask audience of how did they start if, if they have started at all? And uh, what have they done to start their own zero waste? Yeah, Sahar, just want to run that. Evening. Yes, please put that in the chat box or unmute yourself and tell us what is the first few tips that you 
uh, steps that you will incorporate into your life to start living a more mindful or zero waste lifestyle. I started composting. Yay, Gunjan, you go girl. Did you also visit the, um, kind of attend the last Chatka composting webinar? You pro. <laughs> um, so honestly, for me, bioenzymes, woohoo. That's amazing. Um, so for me, to be honest, I started like thinking about the first thing I wake up in the morning is I brush my teeth and I looked at my plastic toothbrush and this, you know, this tube with all of these ingredients that I don't even know how to pronounce. And that was really overwhelming. So I was like, oh, I'm going to use a miswak stick. I'm going to use a neem stick. And I was like, this is amazing. This is the first toothbrush ever known to mankind. And it's like rooted in the Indus Valley civilization and all of that. Um, but truth to be told, I just really missed the sensation of brushing my teeth. And that's when I wanted to transition to a composting bamboo toothbrush. But back in 2015, we didn't have any of those here. So I had to wait for six months for my sister uh, to send me when she came down uh, to bring a, a bamboo toothbrush. And that was kind of the first one that I used. Um, I started to experiment and make more um, toothpaste and things like that. And so that's one of the first few things that I started to do. Going to the chat, stop using a poly bag. Woohoo, thrift shopping and secondhand shopping. Um, I started collecting gray, gray water and water harvesting. Amazing. I stopped using factory toothpaste. Um, these are some amazing things that everyone is up to. Started filling eco bricks recently. That's really, really cool. Maybe um, you can tell us more about that as well in the discussion session about how you make eco bricks. Um, great. Cool. These are really amazing insights. Thanks everyone for sharing. Um, the next thing I would do is I'm such a snacker and um, I would always basically have, uh, when I was hungry, you know, reach out for a bag of chips or granola bars and biscuits and whatnot. So my next thing that I did was I started to carry this little cloth bag uh, with Velcro, with all my almonds, walnuts, fruits. Um, and I just noticed that I also was eating more whole food and which had really good health benefits for me. Um, the next thing I started doing was um, I started composting all my food waste, um, like Gunjan on the chat. Uh, this is the first kamba I use and it's really tiny. And since then I have like a jumbo kamba, graduated from a nano to a jumbo kamba. Um, and then the next thing that I did was started to buy a lot of my food in package free manner. So directly from vendors, from farmers. Um, at the time I was you know, working in Rural Karnataka, so I'd come back with like three kilos of peanuts or um, <laughs> millet or moong dal. Um, so just sh trying to shop in a manner that didn't have lots of plastic. Great. Um, next. So when I was going through my zero waste journey, I realized that it's honestly just very in our Indian. Um, I just realized that going zero waste is really in our Indian kind of DNA, right? And at, um, it's really been like on Instagram and it was kind of at this time, 2015, 16, um, really dominated by a Western rhetoric, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, so here are some examples of Indian examples that I'd love to celebrate um, in the next slide. So one is our bazaars. They're literally everywhere. They're accessible to all of us um, with this amazing access to whole food that is completely package free, whether it's our Nadil Paniwalas or someone who's selling um, you know, guava and fruit. We have access to amazing um, small vendors and India is the land of small business owners. And that is amazing, um, which is so, so distinctively different from the Western inspired grocery stores that started cropping up, giving us pre-dictated amount of packaged food and dal and sugar, and things like that. Um, the next thing is our stainless steel tiffin. Um, people keep, you know, it's uh, Indian tiffins are now become like there are startups around it in, in UK or, you know, called tiffin after our, our Daba Walas, etc. And it's just become this huge poster child of the zero waste movement abroad. Um, but of course, it's an 18th century Indian invention, which has this amazing combination of equipment, three story, two story, but also of a supply chain system. And we all know um, every day, on an average, two lakh Mumbaikers get amazing, healthy, home cooked meals, um, all without producing any waste. Um, and of course, creating about 6,000, 7,000 uh, job opportunities in this, in this way. So I think this is an amazing example of what zero waste looks like um, and creating green jobs. And I think that's a lot to celebrate and great models for us 
and the new tech startups of the world to learn so much from models that have existed in the past and to kind of use models of what they're currently doing to uh, reinvent what we can do in a more circular, zero waste manner. The next. So what's in our waste? Um, I, you know, this is a great source from Daily Dump, an enterprise again that I love, respect and deeply admire. And according to them, 60% of our waste is just food waste. So if we compost all of our food waste, kitchen waste, wet waste, uh, we can help divert about 60% of our waste from landing up in the landfill. Um, and then people often don't know what all the categories of waste are and can be kind of overwhelming. Um, you know, where does everything go? But really, uh, simplistically, we've got dry waste and we've got wet waste. So dry waste is everything from paper, glass, packaging, um, you know, snacks, things like that, that you can keep separately. And wet waste, you can, you know, completely compost. And then within the dry category, you can recycle some things like um, coconut shells, cardboard, paper, um, plastic bottles, things like that. Um, and then you can things that you have to you know, that you have to dispose very carefully, especially is e-waste. Um, so there are only few e-waste recyclers in India that are, you know know how to do that. So um, it's best if you can you know, you know donate your e-waste to organizations like Sahas, for example. And then landfill, there are some products that unfortunately we can't do much about, um, such as medical waste that we're producing a lot at at, at this moment, but also just like things like band aids. Um, you know, diapers, sandy napkins, things like that, which you unfortunately have to landfill. But today we're going to go with some ideas of which um, we can incorporate into our lifestyle where we can reduce all of this in the first place. So those are coming up in the next few slides. Okay, so we'd love to stop and ask everyone some tips and tricks that they are currently incorporating into their kitchen. I think in the midst of the pandemic, everyone has become a master chef and is spending lots of time in their kitchen. So um, maybe if you want to share a few things that you're incorporating in the um, you know, zero waste hacks in your kitchen, uh, we'd love to hear. Clean label shopping. Yeah, that's a good one. I got my uh, cashews and honey and tea. Um, and oil from Clean Label as well. That's amazing. And for anyone who doesn't know them, they're essentially a, co a company that gives you all of your groceries. And when you're done, you can just collect, a, you know, set up a pickup and they'll give you uh, new groceries in new packaging and they'll just take your old one. So it's a completely loop system, completely zero waste grocery shopping. Um, and they're also gorgeous glass jars um, that have all the nutrition information on the back as well. Uh, so it's a really cool startup. So check it out. Um, Eco Sansar, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, another one, make all my masala powders. What a great one! Um, Aparna, Aquagard, yes, who needs single use plastic water? These are amazing things. Um, yeah, no plastic spoons, and um, you know, collect all of your milk packets and give it to the scrap dealer. Amazing. Grey water for the garden, using bamboo jars and storing con in containers. Amazing. These are some amazing uh, tips and tricks. Buying in bulk, homemade spices, biodegradable clothing, make your own bioenzymes. Amazing. You guys got it all. Um, reusing your old clothes for um, wiping your, your countertops instead of using single-use paper, um, composting all of your waste, you know, using cloth bags to get your groceries reinventing leftovers, storing in our old kind of ceramic jars, glass jars, using cast iron, um, using stainless steel, things like that, and a bunch of the other tricks that you already mentioned. That's great to hear. Um, this is a little optimistic, but um, once we all get vaccinated and we can do our little travels again, um, I think we all kind of are missing and craving those just beautiful walks in near the beach or the hikes in nature, um, and just kind of really missing being outdoors. Um, and I think one of those important aspects of enjoying and appreciating the outdoors is also making sure that we are leaving it plastic free uh, whenever we do go there and enjoy it. So carrying our own water bottles when we're going on a hike, uh, carrying our own snacks, um, you know, if you are flying and going somewhere else, um, they often give you these um, headphones that are packaged and then they go through this process of sanitizing and they clean and they put it again in plastic. Um, so you can just carry your own headphones next time if you are taking a long flight. And the best part is you actually get to finish the movie because, you know, at the end, the, the air hostess are trying to come and take all of their 
headsets back, but you get to finish your movie because you have your own um, headphones. So these are a few tips that you can incorporate into your life once we begin to travel. Um, yes, plus it's way more sometimes hygienic and sometimes it is um, also sometimes, you know, when you go to these hotels, they might have small little soaps and shampoos and things like that, but they might be really polluting to the groundwater. So you might rather just take your own soap that you're using. Um, it just means we need to plan a little and pack ahead, but that's doable, right? Um, cool. Amazing. I'm seeing some amazing other ones, um, such as using menstrual cups. You're right, menstrual cups are super, super cool. They made this, uh, they've been using them from the 1920s with no negative health impacts associated with it. Um, they also are really good because they're diverting so much plastic. For example, one pad has about seven to nine plastic bags in them. So by using a menstrual cup, you can help divert so much of plastic over your lifetime. Um, and also the math really adds up. So even if you're not doing it for environmental reasons, you can do it for financial reasons. Um, in your lifetime, you can save upwards of two lakh rupees if you use one menstrual cup. Ooh. Yes, pre-mapping water spots so you can plan uh, zero waste hydration stations. So you can fill up your water. That's a really good one. Um, these are some amazing suggestions. So if anyone wants to also just um, at this point, turn on your audio and share some of your zero waste um, tricks because there have been such amazing uh, suggestions on the chat box. I'd love for all of you to hear from each other as well. I could go. So um, I have a little kit in my bag, which I used to use when I was going on little commutes. I think a little kit for yeah, personal consumption and then one in my vehicle as well. I have a little larger kit in my vehicle. I think these two are really uh, important to me uh, to make sure that uh, whether I'm going out for work or driving people around, I can uh, be as zero waste as possible. Amazing. Thanks so much for sharing, Jacob. Vidhi, do you want to share about um, the dry waste collection centers and waste and stuff? Um, hi, I don't know. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, so I actually uh, started collecting some of my dry waste, which was recyclable. And I got in touch with this, uh, you know, huge recycle center that is there here in Mumbai, in Pabai. And uh, what I do is, I so they actually come and pick up if you have 15 kilos of dry waste. Um, so yeah, like I've been able to, I think just like collect all the Amazon cartons and stuff, because, you know, with the lockdown and everything, there's a lot of things that comes in, even if I'm not per personally purchasing, of course, you know, the family members and stuff, and then there are glass jars and they don't take metal. So I'm still trying to figure out how to recycle that. And, uh, they don't take any soft plastic, but they take hard plastic and they take, you know uh paper cardboard glass so yeah i've been i think um it just feels better you know because i'm doing it to the kachra wala my little bag it's just lighter and that feels good amazing thank you so much for sharing um some things that we can do with our soft plastic is we can rinse them and wash them a little bit and we can donate them to this organization called um uh, rechakra and they make these amazing woven bags out of it um, and they look like shiny and beautiful, but it's just a great way to add more users and add kind of plastic back into the um, into use. So that's one option. So um, thank you so much for suggesting. Does anyone else want to share? There's some um, Ashitosh. Do you want to go? I'm just putting you all on the spot. But anyone else, <laughs> we'd also just you know unmute yourself and kind of share what you're doing because uh, these tips on the chat box are amazing. Okay, no worries. <laughs> cool. Um, but ge just generally, um, these are some really great insights on sustainability, using Amazon carts and making them into art projects and decor around the house is what Ashitosh had mentioned, um, using menstrual cups, composting, even um, thoughts that um, using old kind of t-shirts from your closet to make upcycle little bags. So this is an old t-shirt of mine that I've converted cut it up and made it a little tote bag to go, um, if you can see. So that's a good good thing to do as well. Um, I, I love being outdoors and I love my tea and coffee. So here's a little collapsible cup. Um, it just, it's that tiny and you can literally just put it on your bag. 
and you're ready to go. So this is one, um, using stainless steel straws or no straws at all um, would be amazing as well. Um, cool. And then another one that I love, especially for the kitchen, is a beeswax food wrap. And this is just great instead of aluminum or plastic cling film. Um, it's made from organic uh, cotton and then beeswax. And it essentially takes the shape of really anything that you are looking to wrap. If you're looking to wrap an old sandwich or half a sandwich, half a fruit, um, any jar or container, it's perfect because it just kind of takes the shape of anything. Um, so that's another great um, hack for the Zero Waste Kitchen. Like Jacob said, I just kind of keep a kit um, in my bag, uh, in my glove compartment, in my backpack. So whenever I'm going uh, on the go, I can use uh, my little straw because I love Nardil Bani, uh, tender coconut water, um, and basically have a spoon and fork also, which is missing at the moment, but it's probably in the wash. Um, <laughs> well, that I can just kind of zip with me and take whatever I go. Um, so those are some quick tips and tricks. Um, just some more in our personal care routine. You know, we can use neem combs, which are actually really good for the health of our scalp as well. Um, and then for all of the women in the room who might be using some wipes to kind of wipe down their makeup or their kajal and things like that, you can just use um, organic cotton, little reusable makeup rounds. Um, you can crochet them yourself or you can crochet them with your grandmom. Could be a fun activity while you're in the pandemic. Um, or you can support social enterprises such as ours or others for making sustainable products like these, right? Um, and of course, composting is the best. If you don't have a compost or a kamba, that's no worries. You can just use your um, an old plastic bucket that you might have. All you need to do is pop some holes in them uh, because that just helps the wet waste to uh, decompose and you know provides a good kind of level of aeration. Um, so yeah, those are some of my favorite tips and tricks. In terms of stationery, um, I love just investing in one good ink pen that you can use for your lifetime. Um, also, I think it's kind of like a dying art form writing with ink pens, so that's kind of cool. Or you can use pens that have seeds in the end. So this actually has some spinach seeds um, at the end, you can see. And this looks like plastic, but actually it's kind of just the same top as um, a capsule that you might have when you're under the weather. It has the same kind of cap as that. So it's completely soluble and kind of dissolves. Um, or you could use pencils and pens um, that are made up of newspaper, old newspaper rolled. And there are lots of amazing uh, social enterprises in India that are making these amazing sustainable products. So you're also supporting livelihoods by virtue of your zero waste or low impact um, actions. Cool. And I'm just going to uh, pull out a question, which I thought you could answer at this point, which is, can these beeswax wraps be used for baking? Um, so this is basically to use after you finish baking to wrap, say you have a banana bread and you want to wrap that banana bread, you can use that and it'll just take the shape of the banana bread. Um, you can't use it to bake because the wax will um, melt away at a high temperature and things like that. So you can't use it as an alternative to um, butter paper, for example, but you can use it after you're done to store your goods. I have another question from Akshita asking, how can we please and recycle the containers for makeup of makeup and cosmetic products? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, honestly, write to your brands that you are purchasing from, ask them to have more circular packaging, um, try and buy from other enterprises that are providing an option in perhaps in a more eco-friendly packaging. Um, I think those are your best bets um, because, you know, if you're using concealer, et cetera, it's kind of hard to wash out. And that's also, also often a much lower grade plastic that actually can't get recycled. Um, and also when we often talk about recycling, we often products just get downcycled into a much lower grade plastic. So if you use um, a water bottle that is plastic and you think it's going to get recycled into a new plastic bottle, that often doesn't happen. It gets made into a lower value, lower grade plastic of, for example, plastic toys that are sold at signals, for example, that kids are then playing with, which is really bad and very toxic. Um, so yeah, if we could just, you know, um, maybe possibly uh, try and find enterprises that have just as good as a product, but more circular packaging, that's one, or write to the carbon brand that you're buying from, 
because um, you'll be surprised um, how much pressure we as consumers can actually put on enterprises to change certain practices to become a little bit more circular. Um, I think we have a special request. Uh, if this is connected to the section, uh, Corolla, will you share something? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, first of all, I would really like to thank all the entire team for organizing such a wonderful in, uh, talk. And I'm really, really inspired by you. Seriously, Seher. Seriously, it's a wonderful work that you're doing. So I just have a very, uh, very quick question. But before that, I would like to tell you something. So basically, I am an environmental scientist and uh, from IIT Roorkee. So recently, I got uh, a funding for a village. It's a village in Rajasthan. So where we got the funding from Central Delhi Department of Science and Technology to make this village a zero waste model. So amongst the many projects, we got this funding because the concept was the zero waste model and we have to transform this model, the entire village into a zero waste model using all the green technology interventions. So what we are, propo what we are proposing here is that we are circulating the 100% sewage of that village into the uh, treated water, which can be used for irrigation, one thing. And secondly, the entire solid waste, we are going to convert it into useful, uh, like composting, vermicomposting, and all those things that you just mentioned. But uh, like, I, although I myself uh, is a firm believer of this concept and I'm practicing sustainability myself for a few years now, but I just have one question that because some of the things even I didn't know, they were new to me today. So I just wanted to ask that, what do you think how we can convince the people there? Because, you know, we have an awareness sessions also for them when we are going to start this project because ultimately it's the rural people where we have to actually convince them about the cost. So suppose I, I have to convince them that you have to take the bamboo toothbrush which will, you know, last for a lifetime. Malab, it will always be the, some cost associated with it. So whatever they are using right now, so they are using neem, which has a lot of benefits. They know that, but we can say them to use this or they must be using the plastic toothbrush. So how we can convince them for, you know, the more sustainable options. Seher, before you answer that, uh, so Diti, can I cycle track that conversation for after? Because just for the sake of the rest of the audience, because sure. that sounds very specific sure, sure. question, which is very important to answer. And uh, we're happy to get that question answered. But just for the sake of the rest of the audience, can you take uh, sure. Chikwa's question out of it? I have informed him. That's, we're going to especially address that question because it's a very important question. But just for the sake of the rest of the audience, I'm going to request Seher to keep rolling forward and we will come back to that, I promise. Sounds great. Can we go back to the slide deck uh, if you get a chance? I'm also going to pop all of our um, emails and social media channels. So if anyone wants to write to us, you can ask us these specific questions and we'd be happy to kind of um, address them as well. Sweet. Someone says small business equals big wins. Absolutely. Um, really appreciate that <laughs> as well. Yes, uh, what is the company that reuses plastic? Yes, you can sh wash it. Um, it is Rechakra um, Eco Social. And you can look up Amita um, Desh Pandey. She's the founder. Great. So, my next second realization on my zero waste journey is that we live in a life with um, a world where we have lots of products that are just designed to line up in our landfills and our oceans. And we need a world where we can have more zero waste or more circular, more sustainable products that aren't kind of harming our environment and our health. Um, yeah. So um, as we all know, we're currently living in the largest global garbage crisis of our lifetime. And that's kind of the premise in which our small business by necessities uh, began to create some amazing alternatives for people who are looking to consume more mindfully um, and are looking for all of those alternatives to help them basically reduce their... Cool. Slide, please. Um, so here's an example of one of our products, which is just a stainless steel straw. It's um, food grade, it's certified food grade, it's FDA approved, it's 3304 stainless steel. Um, and if you get one stainless steel straw, you can perhaps um, basically never use a plastic straw in your life again. And that's kind of the concept. And it comes with this little 
cleaner uh, that you can use to even wash it out. So in terms of people who are worried about it being um, you know, dirty and messy, uh, that's one way to address it. Cool. Um, next slide, please. Um, so here are some uh, photos of how we source, how we make products. So all of our packaging is completely uh, compostable, recyclable, or um, um, completely reusable. Uh, behind me, I also have like a refill station jar. So people can come to the office HQ um, and basically fill whatever they want, whether that's liquid soap or laundry detergent or tooth powders. And we literally just manufacture on the other side of the um, um, office as well. Um, so some of the people that we kind of source from is um, people that I actually helped solarize their agri equipment um, through my first job at Selco. And um, that's just some photos of how we get our green gram and some of our spices and things like that. So I think, you know, uh, uh, oh, this is a little bit about photos of our manufacturing team. I think when people say, oh yeah, sustainable options, and then um, sometimes there is this component of like price. And I think that kind of gets in the way of perhaps implementation. And those are totally valid concerns. And I totally appreciate that. Um, but I guess what, what we're trying to do here with small businesses such as Bear or other circular businesses within the same space is really invest in our people and our enterprise and how we source and try and maintain transparency in the supply chain so you know where everything is coming from. Um, we really deeply care about upskilling um, the women in our manufacturing team are learning English, computer skills, um, and there are, here's are just some photos of um, behind the scenes, I suppose. Um, but in terms also about the cost element, I think it is an economy is a scale problem and also solution. Um, I think if more people start kind of demanding for better products, or stable products, um, we will be able to produce so much more and thereby kind of bring the price of alternatives down. Um, I also think it's kind of this ecosystem perspective. It's not just um, you know, one thing, but many multiple things have to come together to make this um, really actualize. For example, I think um, policies and environmental policies that come from governments could basically help um, with tax rebates or whatever it is to help incentivize small sustainable businesses from existing. Um, you know, or you could have, um, with, basically if you were to reduce the tax app for small enterprises like that, you're basically helping reduce the price of alternatives to make it more scalable and more kind of um, mass market. So I think those are few. I think we also need sustainable uh, businesses, manufacturers creating those alternatives. And I think we need consumers asking and demanding for those better products. So all things need to come together to make it kind of um, redefine this cleaner, greener, more just world that we all um, are so much desiring. Um, so yeah, these are some of our products um, and why we use certain products. Um, I wanted to just discuss a little bit about that. Uh, we use bamboo for our straws, for our toothbrushes. You know, bamboo is one of the star fastest growing plants in the world. It takes roughly three weeks to grow completely full size. Um, that's why we use it. Uh, in terms of the beeswax and food wrap, it's a great way to wrap your food and it helps divert so much aluminum foil and so much plastic cling film. Um, and that's why we use it. And when you're completely done using this for like, I don't know, five, 10 um, years or two years based on how you use it and how you maintain it, you can just chop it out into small pieces and you can put it into the garden, you can put it into your compost and it will literally just go back to the earth just like the compost for bamboo um, straws as well. So the idea is to create more products that mirror this cradle to cradle philosophy that come from the earth and kind of go back to the earth. Um, and that's kind of the philosophy that is really rooted in all that we try and do to the best of our ability. We're not perfect, but that's what we're striving for. Next one. Um, we, so yeah, this is a little bit of a how we source. Uh, we try and so, you know, a lot of our products kind of have this pride about India. So we're just trying to, you know, use turmeric, use lavender from Kashmir, like celebrate Indian ingredients um, through all that we do. Cool. Um, so I guess through the session, I encourage you all to kind of put yourselves in these three people's shoes, um, whether you are this adorable auntie in the green who is kind of upcycling all her old saris to make cloth bags, uh, doesn't let anyone um, waste any food and um, always make sure to carry her cloth bag to the grocery store. Or this little boy in the blue who started a carpooling program to go to school, loves 
and embraces hand-me-downs uh, from his older brother and also carries his own stainless, stiffen, uh, stainless steel tiffin to school. And the third, um, this eco-warrior who uses her stainless steel straw for her um, not in pani and coconut water, but also for all her cocktails on the weekends, um, and then uses loves to gift people seed bombs and plants rather than bouquets that are packaged in plastic. Um, and uh, yeah, it composes all of her food waste. So I'm sure you all are seeing versions of yourself in these three characters. And I encourage you to just kind of incorporate more things into your life that you see fit and accessible and possible. Um, yeah. So really the question that I want to leave you all here with today is, and if, can we reimagine a cleaner, greener, more just world where we don't produce any trash in the first place? Amazing. Um, that's about it from me. I'm happy to open it up to um, you know, questions and comments. Um, we'd love to hear what you're doing to incorporate more green practices into your own living um, and in your own lifestyle, what you're doing in lockdown. Um, I saw a lot of comments on bioenzymes. That's such a great way to kind of reinvent a kitchen waste to make something that is so versatile that you can use for wiping down your um, surfaces, tables, countertops, clothes, um, but also use it as a toilet cleaner. Um, it's amazing. So I encourage you to look up um, a recipe to make bioenzymes. Um, if you haven't already, that's another really great one. So we have a, we have a hand up, Sanjana. Uh, you've had your hand up for a while. Would you like to actually address the question? Address a question related to the session to Sahar. Oh, was that an accident? If that was unintentional, then Chiku, can you bring together some questions that uh, the audience has submitted? Yeah, I think this is a really good one. Gunjan says small cities are producing more trash by just copying all modern practices and leaving their own um, good old practices. Definitely, and I think the notion of zero waste really is kind of celebrates a lot of things that we used to do traditionally in India. And we're talking about kind of bringing that back in a way that um, also kind of is, um, you know, scalable, accessible, um, and kind of, yeah, just where, I think where honestly India and just lots of Asian countries are in this really interesting crossroads where we, can mimic the West and have these hundreds of restaurant inspired grocery stores, clothes, clothing stores and all of that, or we can kind of reinvent a different version and go our own different path. And I think we might be our, the last generation also that has seen that whole era of uh, returning the Pepsi bottles and getting back 50 paisa and, you know, um, seeing those circular models, um, seeing our grandmothers make things from scratch, whether that's their pickles or the way they store things and things like that. So. I think our generation has this very, very important role um, to incorporate what we do know from our future generations and to really build, I think, circular business models um, that are really supportive of community health, of justice, that are really just winning on social, environmental um, and economic metrics to prove that we can actually do it another way um, and you know, thereby kind of create this uh, future. Yeah, very pertinent question there. We're from Vivi about bio waste, especially in these times. Uh, how can we reduce bio waste at this point? Do you have any thoughts on that question? Yeah, um, unfortunately, like um, specifically medical waste um, within the bio waste uh, area, there is honestly not much that I'm not an expert on this. I don't even want to um, uh, pretend to be, but unfortunately, we are producing a lot of medical waste and bio waste. And, often that um, is not really well treated in lots of countries such as ours, we're actually just learning what to do with it. So there is a lot of uh, uncertainty as well. Uh, I wanna do a, a one shout out on one solution that I, I thought was really interesting. It's called a Neo Sanitation. And essentially they take um, masks, um, single use masks and sanitary pads, etc., in a, a kind of a, a unit <clears throat> basically help incinerate it in kind of the most low carbon way as possible. And I think right now what we're doing is we're producing, we're throwing all the masks and everything on the road. And then we kind of are um, hoping that our local BBMP or local municipality waste pickers and 
um, other waste collectors are segregating it. I think it's really, really important where at Sarah, where um, we need to find ways to do on-site decentralized waste management in a way that is um, non-polluting or you know as little as possible um, in order not to even put that on the road in the first place, knowing that maybe someone can you know contract something by virtue of uh, going with your like handling your waste and things like that. So I think there are lots of models for the future. Check out uh, check out neo sanitation. Um, it was a model that was used only for sanitary napkins, but has been successfully used for um, masks, actually, various and P, uh, you know, personal protective equipment in various hospitals for on-site um, good disposal of them. So yeah, I think those are some things to do and look at. I have a question on how do we clean bamboo straws? It could be a health issue. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so stainless steel straws you can use for your lifetime. Bamboo straws you can't use it for your lifetime. Um, you should just compost them whenever you're done with them. Um, you should clean it with a straw. Um, you should wipe it down dry, and as far as possible, you should make sure it gets dried and gets like plenty of sunlight and things like that. Um, so this is more versatile and less maintenance. Um, just to be uh, honest and open and transparent about that. Another person asked about what you can do with your bubble wrap. And this is kind of a great um, alternative. It's like a pa paper wrap, and this is used to wrap like glass and things like that. Um, and you have a more sturdy version of this for um, electronics and things like that. There's also some amazing innovation going on in this space with um, using mushroom and mycelium and hemp. So for example, you know, uh, when you buy electronics like TVs and things like that, they have they come in all of the styrofoam because of course they're protecting the the TV from like moving around. But basically there is um, all of this research going on and all of this paradise packaging is one solution uh, company that is doing this um, that basically has mycelium or, or, or mushroom based trays that basically take the shape of, um, uh, it would look just like styrofoam and you could put your TV in or whatever, but it is made in seven days and then you can compost it and it goes back to, to the earth within 30 days. It's completely compostable in 30 days. So check out those kinds of packaging. Um, and maybe lots of you among in this room are gonna create some of those more sustainable solutions for us um, in the e-commerce and shipping space, you never know. Um, so yeah, sky's the limit. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead Deepa. Uh, hi. Uh, I just joined 10 minutes ago, so I did not hear uh, fully. Uh, so when you are telling about uh, steel straws, stainless steel straws, has it been properly analyzed? What is the carbon footprint of manufacturing the steel straw versus carbon footprint, carbon footprint or water footprint of manufacturing that versus a plastic straw and, and its overall lifetime? See, for why I'm saying this is, for example, uh, electric car definitely has significantly higher carbon footprint of while it's being produced. It's only, only after a, uh, over a period of time, over, a, over its lifetime, it crosses the footprint actually is lesser than a diesel car. So for, for all the uh, alternatives that you're suggesting, are such analysis being done is the question. Yeah, that's Primarily that's that stainless steel straw. Yeah, definitely. That's a good question. We do engage in life cycle um, impact assessments for a lot of our products. Um, so what we do think is that the amount of plastic that is generated is at this unprecedented rate. And if we think if one stainless steel straw can help divert over thousands of plastic straws, um, we think that is worthwhile. In terms of um, environmental and carbon footprint of the straws, I have not uh, undergone that study. Uh, but there are several organizations that are helping build more accessible um, carbon and waste calculators um, and things like that, which are great solutions that hopefully we can incorporate into, you know, doing more detailed life cycle uh, analysis for our own products. You can check out our impact page and um, I think some of our life cycle assessments are also pretty open source data accessible on our website, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, that's just my short answer. Definitely more to learn, definitely more to figure out. Uh, I've said this before in the presentation, we're not perfect. Um, and we're looking definitely to grow and learn and provide more stable options and always looking to partner with right people who are um, looking to do the same. And I think we need the world needs all of us to help kind of define this cleaner, greener world. So thanks, Deepak, for that question. And um, yeah, and that's a great encouragement for me to go deeper as well on that. 
we had a question from no, no. one of our thanks Deepak sorry thank you for that we have a question from Naveed about how to deal with e waste but can you actually name some uh, some websites or services where yeah like uh, yeah no, hello, can, can you hear me yeah, cool. yeah. Take it. Um, it's in the truck. Yeah, Navi, tell me. I, I, I can't find uh, Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, Navi, uh, just for the sake of the audience, I'm going to take your question, which is how do you deal with e waste? Uh, what do you suggest we can do? Sorry, I, I missed that earlier, but yes. E waste. Um, so we collect it all. We put it, we have a little box here. Maybe every six months or so, we basically send it to Sahas. Um, Sahas has operate, uh, operational units in several cities. Um, so you can just find out who is the best e waste recycler in your city. There are also others like Bin Bag and Cash. Um, so just, you know, do a little um, research. Um, I think the book also has a list of e waste recyclers all across India. So feel free to check it out as well. Um, and yeah, I think just collect it, keep a separate place for it. Um, and maybe every six months or even once a year, you can take out all those excess cables that you might have and you can dispose it at the e-waste collection center. Cool, Chroma stores also take e-waste. That's great, that's very accessible. Thank you so much, uh, Dipanwati, for that suggestion. Appreciate it. Interesting, I did not know that that was useful. Great, I think we're gonna wrap this down. If we haven't answered your questions, we have saved your questions and we will be answering this in the chat. Uh, uh, Sudipti, we have noted your question as well, that specific uh, longer conversation which we need. You can also always type uh, into the DMs for your questions. Can I say? Uh, uh, can I say no? Sure, Navid. Uh, make, make it quick because we are wrapping up in less than two words, so please. Yeah. Well, can I say? Navid? Go ahead, please. Hello, is it audible? Yeah. Okay, Hello. now uh, we're going to wrap this up because I'm I think I'm a, I'm, I'm a audio one. I'm going to mute him because we, for the sake of the everyone's network issue, I guess. Uh, yeah, Jacob, before yeah. wrapping up, we have a very good question. Uh, Saha, so they want to know like, uh, since zero, like Sahar is already offering zero waste course. Is it going to be the same, similar with the webinar or something else they want? Oh, so sweet. Thanks for asking. Yes, um, we have a course on going zero waste and we also have a second course on sustainability in 30. Um, and there are two different courses. You can check it out on the links that I just provided above. Um, that goes into detail. So it has um, each model, the model, modules are on personal care, home care, travel, kitchen, closet. And we have roped in a bunch of experts from Fair Trade India, Fashion Revolution India, um, C.B. Ram Kumar, who's a climate reality leader who worked under former Vice President Al Gore. So it just ropes in a bunch of experts. And our second course has modules on renewable energy, um, biogas. Um, again, we've roped in a bunch of experts from UN Habitat, um, Hasi Durullah from Shekharan Nalini, um, and uh, yeah, among lots of other experts. So it's got DIY videos on how you can do it and you can follow along. And then it's also got um, resources as well. <laughs> Uh, so we're just going to quickly wrap up with a quick learning assessment survey. Um, if everyone can just quickly, this is three simple questions. If you could just click on that and answer those questions about how you've thought, what you thought about the session, what was your knowledge of the topic before the session on a rating of one to 10 and your knowledge of the session, your knowledge of the topic after the session, uh, that would really help us understand how we can improve these sessions better. There's also an open field where you can give us suggestions. You can even give us your phone number and name if you want to talk to us directly about something specific. So to communicate with us properly in a formal way, uh, that is the link to use. Other than that, we are inviting you to come volunteer with us. We are running an initiative called Care for Care where we are supporting carers. We all know people who are working to find lists and uh, oxygen cylinders, beds, uh, everything. You know, there are, there are a lot of people doing this work out there. There are people cooking food, there are people taking care of dogs. There, there are people around us who are caring for people who need care. We are taking care of carers, so you can join us as a volunteer. And uh, finally, uh, we want to be an NGO that is completely citizen funded. 
And if you want to donate to us, you can donate to us on that link right there. So Heather, is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up? Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Chatka team, thank you for organizing this. Um, and yeah, so excited to be here. Great, thank you very much. We're going to wrap this up. Thank you. Thanks everyone.